Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we've got something from Thermalright. It is the Royal Knight 120 SE CPU cooler. Okay then, so we are here with another Thermalright air cooler. This time it's the Royal Knight 120 SE. And let's take a look what comes in the box and see what the specs are, shall we? So. Ooh. Okay, so this is the Royal Knight. This is the installation, and this is actually the manual RTFM people. And of course, then you get this and that. Right, so let's have a look at the fans. The fans. So it's a standard fan. Yeah, it's the standard uh, TLC one twenty eight V two. So it's a version two of the standard fans. You got a one twenty there. Then you've got a slim 120. Ooh. Now this one is a bit better because it's got a braided cable and stuff, but this is a thin 120. Okay, so let's get this out and have a look, shall we? Okay, so let's have a look what the accessories are. Okay. Okay, so it's going to have the support for the later socket AM4, M5 and LGA 1700 as well as the newest uh, Intel socket as well. So, this does come with, yeah, it comes with a, a fan splitter, does come with thermal paste. Now, just so everyone knows, it does, all thermal right coolers or AIOs come with extra thermal paste, just so you know. Okay, so let's take a look at the cooler. Okay, so as for the tower, here it is. Now it looks very similar to the Phantom Spirit, but look at this, look at that. That is a huge slant. Do you know what that's for? This is for RAM clearance. That's why it's a single one or a very thin 120 fan, so it doesn't catch your RAM, which is quite nice. I believe this is one of the first ones they've actually done it like this. I mean, that's a one hell of a bend right there. And obviously the base plate is exact same base plate. This has six heat pipes and it does look really, really nice. I will say that the fins are very loose as well. So I'm hoping this will perform well. So let's get to the specs now, shall we? Okay, so as for the tower, the dimensions here are length 122 by 114 and height is 155. So it should fit majority of cases. So does support all the latest AMD as well as Intel. Now, as for the uh, fans, this one being the uh, 15B, this one will start here. Now, this is a 15 millimeter fan. Now, the RPM is rated for 1800 RPM at max speed. They say 26.1 dB for noise. The airflow, the retina, uh, 56 CFM, that's at max speed with a 1.2. 24 millimeter h2 that's max with a four pin connector and it does have an sfdb bearing so very good quality bearing and it is a four pin so the other fan this is a, actually a version two of this uh, particular fan obviously it's 25 millimeters thick it's 120 they say it's rated 1500 rpm max with a 25.6 decibel rating for the noise they reckon it's 66.17 cfm max with a 1.53 millimeter h2o for static pressure the connector is of course a four pin and it is an sfdb bearing so let's get this on the test bench shall we This is the Thermalright Royal Knight 120 SE at 50% fan speed. It's basically silent at 50%. This is at 100% fan speed. It's 
It's definitely louder at 100%, but it's not obnoxiously loud at all. So, when it comes to the overall test system, now it is an AM4 platform, it's an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, it's got 16 gigs of DDR4, it's an X570 platform, it does have a 1TB NVMe for boot, and also it does have the RX 7600 XT graphs card. Now, the CPU will be being used for testing with PBO, and it's also in the Shadowbase 800FX from Be Quiet. Okay, so when it comes to the overall testing, now my testing methods are Cinebench R23, Blender Pavilion, Blender Classroom, and 3 Mark CPU test. It's because they do hit the CPU differently through different tests. Now, as for the room temperature, this would be 50% as well as 100%. The ambient in the room was 10 degrees, but the after testing for both rounds it did go up by four celsius so they went up to 14 degrees now for 50 percent fan speed the overall power the cpu pulled during the run was 202 watts the cpu did go down from 202 to 176 watts now the cpu clocks remember now that is going to determine if the cooler is either performing well or not because of the CPU clocks. Now the CPU clocks were a high of 4.9 with a low of 4.2, which is well over base clock. So it's not actually bad considering it's only a 50% fan speed. And also I do include the overall fans that are in the case as well. They are run at 50%, so you get an overall good comparison. Now for Cinebench R23, this, the actual idles were very low, 22 Celsius with a max of 80. Blender Pavilion idles 22 with a max of 80 again. Blender Classroom idles 22 with a max of 78. And 3D Mark Super Test idles 22 with a max of 69. Nice. Now, for 100% fan speed, that does include the overall fans inside the case as well. Now, the thermal output was a little bit higher. It did start drawing 205 watts, and the lows were also higher as well. This was 188 watts for the lows, as well as the CPU clocks did overall go up as well. The highs were 4.9, but the lows, instead of 4.2 with 50%, it did go up by 100 megahertz of 4.3. You're gaining performance there just by go letting the fans go f at it for 100%. So as for Cinebench R23, the idles are 21. Yes, I double checked that with a max of 77. Blender Pavilion idles 21 again with a max of 75. Blender Classroom idles 21 with a max of 75 and 3D Mark Super Test idles 21 with a max of 65. So as you can see, there is a major difference, especially when it comes to thermals, once you go to 100%, but it, that does come at a cost for noise. And then what I'm going to do right here is actually put up a graph showing you the overall differences between like the Phantom Spirit 120 S, uh, SE Evo, the, the original uh, Peerless Assassin, the Phantom Spirit, the original, then the Evo. I'm going to put up a couple of dual tower CPU coolers against this, like Noctua. I'm going to put them on you because at the end of the day, it, that's where it's going to show you where this actually stacks up against Thermorite themselves, as well as Noctua, like Be Quiet, and so forth. So make sure you continue to watch because this is where the graphs are going to show. Okay, then, so at 20. Eight pound on Amazon currently. The SE is actually cheaper than the original Royal Knight, which it's a uh, more of an aesthetic choice. The original Royal Knight just basically has covers on top of the heat pipes, which does cover them up. But that's the only actual vi vi visual difference I could see just by looking at it on it on Amazon. So. Whether you want to buy this or not, what I'm going to tell you is it does support the later sockets, and quite honestly, it did well in this. It did hold 205 watts, which is fantastic, especially for a new CPU cooler as well. Now, this was this hadn't long come out in the UK, so all I'm going to say is if you're looking for the Peerless Assassin, but you're worried about clearance, this is where this one, I think, comes in, because this is where this is going to actually benefit the consumer more because this does have an offset to the heat pipes to actually allow good clearance when it comes to have very tall memory modules and some of them can get stupidly tall like the Corsair Dominant, the Platmans and all them they get really tall for instance so 
it's safe to say that if you want to buy this cooler to run your modern CPU and worrying about RAM clearance, then at least this one covers those bases. Whether you should buy it or not, that's completely up to you because that's going to be your decision, not mine. I'm just here to tell you if it performs good and if it's worth the money. Well, it performs good and it's certainly worth the money if you're looking for a modern cooler. That's where the Peeler's Assassin always had faults, is the fact that it didn't have the correct RAM clearance. You always had to position the fan on the side at a different awkward angle. And for aesthetics, it doesn't look the overall best either. At least with this one, it does look aesthetically pleasing and it does have that offset. So if you want to buy one, I'll leave a link down below. And as always, big thank you to Thermalright for continuing to support the channel. So yeah, look, I have got loads of stuff coming here. I have got something that's here already. Let me tell you about it. So here it is. This is the Sapphire Pulse RX 9070 graphics card. I have got this in for review as well as my test bench is going to be having a bit of an upgrade. It's going AM5. So yes, my current system that I'm using for editing will be going in this. So that'll be a B650 motherboard with an RX, uh, with an, uh, an AMD Ryzen 7900 CPU. 12 cores, 24 threads, and I can pull up to over 270 watts. So yeah. So I hope you guys at least enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe. This is Richard for Welshy Tech. Goodbye.